Welcome to the Head to Head Challenge. Today we are in Rotterdam with People Minded Media. This studio is today the place to be for the finalists of Miss World Netherlands 2023-24. The Head to Head Challenge is to test the skills of interviewing and the knowledge of the young girls. So if you want to see all about them, we have Team Orange, White, Blue and Red. Of course, these are also the colors representing the Netherlands. Are you ready to face them? Hoi, mijn naam is Dunia en ik ben 22 jaar. Ik woon in Apeldoorn en mijn hobby's zijn high heels en ik hou van koken. Ik wens alle meiden heel veel plezier en succes. Hoi, ik ben Jane Kruister. Ik ben 17 jaar oud. Ik kom uit Den Haag en mijn hobby's zijn kunstschaatsen. Ik wens iedereen heel erg veel plezier. Hallo, ik ben Joni. Ik ben 25 jaar. Ik kom uit Eindhoven. Mijn hobby's zijn sporten, leuke dingen doen met vriendinnen en wandelen met mijn hondje. Ik wens alle andere meiden heel veel succes. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. This is the Team Red of the Head to Head Challenge. You just saw all the girls in the introduction. So welcome, girls. Thanks. How are you doing? Good. Good? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm nervous. But, um, nervous? Yeah. It's your second time doing it. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's not different. It's the same nerves. <laughs> the same nerves yeah. of past year. Yeah. But still the same nerves. Uh, but I'm excited. We can do it. So. Uh. Yeah, yeah. You made a great <laughs> t-shirt out of it. So that was one of the things that we asked this year to prepare very well and to prepare a t-shirt that fits you together. Yeah. You did a good job, girls. I'm proud of you. So tell me a little bit about your Beauty with a Purpose, Jane, in short. So my Beauty with a Purpose is about homelessness in the Netherlands. It stands for SDG 1, which stands for No Poverty. And I think it's important that more attention should be paid to it here. Okay, thank you. Joni. My Beauty with a Purpose is SDG 3, Good Health and Well-Being. Um, I put up my uh, campaign for stem cell donation. Yes. A stem cell donation, in what kind of terms, what direction it's to? Can you tell us something more about that? Um, I spread information about what stem cell donation is and I try to make people um, convince. stem cell donor. Yeah. yeah. To convince ladies and gentlemen yeah. to do the donation for it. You can help a lot of people with it in the end, right? Um, yes, yes, but not a donation. Uh, yeah, stem cell donation. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dunja, tell me about your Beauty with a Purpose. Yes, my Beauty with a Purpose is food poverty. And that is SCG2, no hunger. And yeah, I want to help people. I want to uh, be an inspiration for other people that they also want to help. And yeah. That's it. <laughs> so these SDGs are very important, right? And yeah. we also learned about a list of 20 21st women that I gave you some weeks ago, months ago, mm -hmm. to prepare upon and to do some research. And in the end, we still got two left for this group. And one of them is Mary Pickford. Tell me something about Mary Jane. Uh, she was a theater and a film actress. She also did um, produce films and she was a film author. Um, she made her first debut in 1999. Um, first she was an a, a theater actress at Fout Filet and after that she became an actress in movies. But she started at a very young age because there was a need. Can you tell me something about that, Dunja? There was a need because she was very young and at first her mom said no, but then there was a question that the money was important, right? Yeah. yeah. So because, tell me, uh, what happened there? Uh, her father left the family and three years later her father died. So there was an income missing and um, the one of the 
people living in the house at uh, from her mother um, uh, could offer her the role but uh, first uh, her mother didn't want her to uh, but she could earn a lot of money yes. so she said it was okay and how did that develop because she earned a lot of money but she became very powerful so how did it end it up for her um, she got the chance to um, go to the big movies. She had a small role right there, but she earned a lot of money. And at the age of 25, she earned more money than the president of the United States. Yes, indeed. Um, yes, and uh, there was a time, uh, a moment when she was the richest person of the United States. So she became really powerful at a very young age. How can you reflect that on yourselves and in the Netherlands? With powerful women coming out of poorness because she was not that well for it. So how can you reflect, reflect that on yourself here in the Netherlands? Yes, I think um, if you want to do something, you need to do it. Sometimes first you think maybe it's too hard or I can do it, but if you believe in yourself, she had two children, and I think we can do it. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we very can do well, it. Yeah, 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 indeed. <laughs> and I think very it was good. also really important that she stood up for herself. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, because at that time, that it was really a man's world, you yeah. know. So it's very hard, and especially in the in the 1900s, it was a whole different kind of time, and now we have more rights as a woman, but at that time it was very special yeah. to be such an important person yeah. into the industry of actress and films and movies and video. Yeah. Yeah. So she did a great job and she yeah. laid the path for us all, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And another one that we want to discuss is Helen Keller. Yeah. What a lady. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. tell me about this lady. So she was a linguist and uh, American writer. She became deaf and blind by just the age of 19 months old. Yes. Yeah. But she learned she learned at seven years old the finger alphabet. Yes. Which is really special. And it's very and special. And also. Yeah, and yeah. what did she do with her talent? Because what she did with the talent was even more impressive. Can you tell me something about that? Um, she wrote books and uh, also an uh, autobiography about her life, which is well known. Um, she uh, gave speeches and she um, convinced herself for women and for people with disab disabilities. <laughs> yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, don't forget English is not our main language. <laughs> we normally speak Dutch, but for the audience, we just do it in English. So very, very well, ladies. Good job. Well done. So uh, she also started an organization. Tell me something about that. Um, she had an organization and it was called Helen Kessler International Organization and it helped with um, the blind people. And deaf. Yeah, blind, blind and deaf, deaf. Blind. very, yeah. very important, not only blind, but also yeah. deaf people. Yeah. And she educated people. Yeah. So that's very important. Yeah. What did you learn from her for yourself, for the future? What did you take out of that story? I think it does not matter which kind of disabilities you have, because you can still achieve a lot, even though you have those problems. Yeah. Do you totally agree on that? Yeah. Or do you yeah. have something to add to that? No, yeah. because she also uh, was the first deaf and blind person yes. yeah. who ended high school and yes. uh, cum laude university. Yes. Yeah. Well done. So I hope you learned a lot of these two strong yeah. women. Really. They meant a lot in the, in the past, but still in the future. They're still very, very famous, even though they're not, no longer here. Yeah. So let's have a look. Your team is health. health. health yeah. So Dunya, you have a job in healthcare. Yeah, that's true. So for you, it's very, very easy going or not? Yeah, but health is a, is a big uh, subject. A subject. Yeah. yeah, so 
It's not only mm. in uh, the healthcare, but also... Uh, Do you think in the Netherlands it's well arranged? Um, it was, but it it's was. getting less. And on which point do you find it's less? Um, there was a kind of uh, research that in 2020, um, eight out of ten people think their health is good, and now it's only seven out of ten. And but it's still very high. It's not under it's the five. Still getting less, and the costs are getting more. So, yeah, and the people that have uh, not much money, they uh, think five only out of five ten. out of ten. Yeah. And where do you see the possibilities to improve so we can move up in in the scale again to to score better with the audience or with the people in the Netherlands? Where do you think we can gain some points? Because you did the research, you know? Yeah. So at which, what point do people think, okay, for this, I can only give a five or six or a seven? Yeah. Um. I think it's because they um, do not have a good doctor they can go to and um, older people um, do not really always have the chance to go to a doctor because they and are not good, mm. sorry. good at walking and stuff anymore. And they... Uh, some sometimes there's no place because mm. everything is full yeah um, people that live uh, at home and need help they need to uh, wait a very long time so that uh, and the waiting only list getting more more yeah. waiting list and longer and how do you see that improved in the future mm. on what point do you think the government has to take action and put some more attention to um, I think um, they need more money for healthcare, um, but but people yeah. are paying a lot already to yeah. that. So yeah, but more yeah. money, the, the <laughs> more money only. Need to get <laughs> more money. Or the government. The yeah. uh, costs of the. Um, um, yeah, I think they should ask less money for, um, especially people. Uh, who has a problem with their health and just in general less money for health insurance. Yeah, but I think also um, the people around the people can also help. Um, yeah. I, I work... Uh, you work in healthcare. Work in health yeah. healthcare and there are many problems. I see everything and if I, were, if I talk about myself and my mother can help me... <coughs> It will do a lot for also people like us. Yes. So any message you want to give to the world before we end the interview from head to head? Jane? Uh, I think it's really important to help each other. Yoni, you have something to add to that message? Um, I think it's important to be yourself and stay yourself. And I think you can reach a lot. Dunia. Yeah, every can, everyone can do whatever they want, and we can do it. Aww. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, you see it right here, a Team Red, very powerful woman. And they are ready to conquer the world, and especially to spread the world within the Netherlands. And from now on, ladies and gentlemen, you can vote on Dunja, Yoni or Jane. And please do so, because one of them, in two days, they will get the chance to put the final word out. So good luck, ladies, and I'm very proud of you. Please stand up because there's a lot more to see on the back side of yes. those t-shirts. <laughs> and with that said, ladies and gentlemen, see you within a while with the group three. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you saw the teams. They are amazing. Didn't you find the same? Now it's up to you. You have to vote on one of each team. The winner of each team will be facing each other the 24th of October. And there they will do the final test. And there we will find out who the winner is of the head-to-head -head challenge. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, now we need you to get your votes done. Under the, the videos, you can put your vote by putting the name of the finalist and then we will count who will be the winner of the Head to Head Challenge. So, ladies and gentlemen, now it's up to you.